Hello, hello, ladies. Great seeing everyone. Hi, Anne and Joanne and Cheryl. I'm excited for tonight. It's going to be fun. Wait another minute or so. Hi, Renee. Yes. Hope everyone is staying cool. It is hot today. I think it was the worst one of the week so far. But I was encouraged to see that Saturday and Sunday are going to be a little cooler. So, for the weekend, the holiday. So, hopefully that's true. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, welcome everyone. It is Tuesday evening with the Wexford Stamper, and this is our 4th of July edition. And thank you for everyone who is jumping on here. I am excited to share with you these three projects. And before we get started, I want to remind you that we all, as always, on my blog, I will have a PDF that you can download that has all three projects, all the directions, pictures, everything. So um, if you're a person that likes to have a hard copy of directions, I am that same person. So hi, Kathy, nice for, nice. Thank you for joining. So this is available on my blog and my blog post will be up shortly after the live stream this evening. And don't forget, with this one, I'm also offering a kit that will allow you to make all three projects on your own. And the kit can be free with a $30 order. If you want to use my hostess code 2V3JCKNY, or the kit itself is $20. You can message me on Facebook if you'd like a kit, or you can email me either way. So um, I'm excited to be able to offer the kit for these three projects. I think you're really going to love them. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, our first one is going to be the Stars and Stripes Cupcake Box. Who doesn't love cupcakes? Okay, you guys know I do. Well, the reason I made this and designed this is I found these at my local grocery store. Have you guys found these yet? Yes, these are the Hostess. They're a limited edition. They always have them for the different um, holidays. And these are for the 4th of July. Now, even though my box holds the patriotic Hostess cupcakes, it certainly can hold other things. If you don't have the cupcakes or don't want to put cupcakes in, I just love the way it turned out. I think it's so bright and, and bold and really looks perfect for the 4th of July. So how about you guys tell me um, what you guys are doing for the 4th of July this week, weekend. I'm actually headed to my um, cousin, cousin Judy's and she's going to have a family get together at, and she has a pool. So we will be in the pool the whole afternoon, although it looks like it's only going to be in the 70s on Saturday, which sounds really great. So I'm anxious to see some of my relatives that I haven't seen since the pandemic. So I'm very much looking forward to the weekend. What are you guys doing? All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our cupcake box. Remember, all the directions will be um, available on my blog, so don't worry, oh, and you would be, you in the restaurant business, you never get off for the um, holidays, do you? All right, so this is a piece of Pacific Point, and you have lots of different choices as to what blues you might want to use um, when you're making these, but I chose Pacific Point and Real Red for this one. There's lots of choices, the Poppy Parade is pretty, the Navy, Night of Navy works, so misty moonlight so it's really your preference but i chose for this one the um, pacific point and real red all right this is the bottom of my box and this is going to be seven inches by seven inches let me show you this box here real quickly okay so we're gonna have this bottom is what we're making right now 
All right, and it's seven inches by seven inches, and we're gonna score it on two inches on all four sides. Keeping it simple, that's the way I like it. Oh, you're working too, Kathy. Ugh. Yuck. Well, I hope you get some time off. It sounds like the weather is going to be um, a lot nicer. So hopefully when you do get some time off, it'll be a little nicer. All right, there is all my scoring for my box bottom. Welcome, Jean, nice to see you. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to fold on all my score lines here. Yeah, I'm excited to see some relatives I haven't seen in quite a while. My, I have an uncle, his name's Harold, and he is 94, and he is the last one of his generation um, left with the family, so he's like the big cheese. So I'm anxious to see him. He just got a pacemaker, but he's doing really, really well. So I'm anxious to see him. Haven't seen him for a year and a half, so. All right, now what I'm doing here, I'm cutting the right-hand side. I'm going to the first vertical score line, cutting all the way up to the first horizontal. Then I'm cutting off little wedges here so it fits into our box. And then I even snipped a little bit off there. Okay. Hi, Jean. Yeah, I'm, got, I'm looking forward to it. And Judy has a pool, a nice built-in in-ground pool. So we play volleyball and basketball and things in the pool. So we'll stay nice and cool, I'm sure. All right, so there is the cuts for that. All right, I'm going to turn it so that this is the outside of my box showing. I'm going to grab my Tombow. And let's go ahead and put some Tombow on all these flaps that I've cut. This is a very, very simple box, easy to put together. That's the way we like it when we're making fun gifts for people. Now I'm just taking each of those flaps and I'm folding them over and putting them behind the panel and then lining up the edge of that panel with the fold from the flap. And that Tombow gives me a little bit of a chance to slide it around a bit if I didn't get it quite in the right spot, which is nice, because you know how hard that can be with some of the others. You gotta tear it. We don't like to do that if we can help it. All right, so last flap. Gonna go back and make sure all those flaps are nice and sturdy. I think we're good. I'm going to grab me a Hostess cupcake. And it fits right in there perfectly. So would a lot of other things, but I try to go as, when I go with a um, theme, I like to go all out. All right, so let's put this aside for now. We're gonna work on the lid now. Okay, the paper I'm using for the lid, this piece is five and one sixteenths by five and one sixteenths. All right. That sixteenth allows us to be able to make it at a size that will make it just big enough to slide over the bottom of the box. And we're going to go ahead and score this at one inch all the way around. It's easier to add the length to the paper rather than trying to, in the past, I've, I've tried to like move the paper away from the side a little bit and score to try and make it fit better. This way works easier. Cut the paper a little larger. Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Yep. All of them are going. I'm going to have a box for each one of my cupcakes, and I'm definitely going to give them out. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and fold on all of these score lines. All right, we're gonna do the same thing again. Now these um, tabs are so small that we really don't have to worry about cutting them shorter. I'm just gonna cut the little wedges out of them, okay? 
We're just gonna cut off a little bit of the edge so they come together nicely in the corner of the box. All right, and one more time. All right, does anybody know if there are um, fireworks going to be in York? I don't even know. I haven't even checked. They usually they used to have them at the baseball field, but I haven't even read anything or seen anything, so I don't know. All right, so now we've got the Tombow on all our flaps, and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the bottom of the box. We're gonna take each of the flaps, bend them forward, and slide them behind the box panel and line them up right there. So easy. All right. And one more. That's our box lid. That goes on top of our cupcake box. Voila, very easy. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do some decorating on top and we really don't even have to, we can just leave it all together like this. Okay, you're gonna need to cut um, basic white strips of cardstock. Oh, that sounds great, tell her I said hello. Double fireworks at the Rebs, oh wow. That sounds great. We'll be home. Is it going to be on Sunday? Because we'll be home Sunday. All right. Now, we have three. These, these strips are one half inch by three inches. And we're going to go ahead and put them horizontally along the top of the box, kind of like in flag formation. Hmm. We'll just watch them from the house. I, we used to go down to the fireworks when the kids were little and I'm done. <laughs> I'll watch them from the house. And we live near Outdoor Country Club and they usually have some as well. So I'm going to take them from the top first, one at the top, and then I'm going to put this one right in the center so it looks kind of like a flag. All right. So those are one half inch by three inches. Okay, next we're going to make the adorable little rosette on the box. This is my favorite part. I love this. Yeah, I'm happy to watch it from the house. I hear you, Cheryl. All right, now how do we make a rosette? It's not too difficult. It may take a little practice, but it's super fun. What I have here is a strip of Pacific Point cut at one by 11. And you might be able to see, I don't know, I can bring it close enough to the camera. Oops. I have scored it every quarter inch. So I grabbed my scoring board and scored it every quarter inch. So that takes a little bit of time to do that. But once you have that done, you're just going to do a zigzag pattern. You're going to fold back, fold forward, fold back, fold forward, just like that, and kind of squeeze it so that it has a good crease. And you're gonna do that on the whole length of your 11 inch strip, just zigging and zagging. This is when your scoring board really comes in handy because this would be really hard to do to keep it straight and everything if you didn't have that wonderful scoring board. So I just go zigzag back and forth and every maybe eight or 10, I'll stop and squeeze the pile. See how I'm making a pile all on top of each other? I'm just, the Revs is short for the revolution. It's the baseball team. I went to a baseball game like the first year they had it, and it was fun. The girls really had a great time, but we haven't been back since the girls are gone. But um, now I've lost my little stack. There we go. All right, we're getting close to the end here. This is the most boring part. 
Well, I'm going to just go ahead and finish this and then I can stack it when I'm all done. But I think you have an idea how I do this. We're just zigging and zagging. Remember when you were in school and you made those little fans out of a piece of, of construction paper? Same kind of zigging and zagging here. Okay, so there. Now I have my strip all zigging and zagging the whole way from one end to the other. Okay, but now we're going to make a loop. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Tombow and I'm going to turn it so that there is a valley on this side. And I'm going to put a little Tombow inside that little valley. Okay, then I'm going to bring the other end of the loop around and put this valley into that valley. So now we have two valleys and they're kind of on top of each other. Okay, so it's not going to change the um, pattern of how the paper is going up, down, up, down. Okay, you want it to continue to have that. Now, you need to wait a little bit and make sure this is nice and dry and staying together because the next part puts a little bit of stress on all your sections here. Okay, so... All right, I think we have it now. Let me go back and there. Okay, now for the next part, you're gonna put your little zigzag piece just like that. You're going to bring in two punched circles. It really isn't that important what size they are. These are, I think, one and three eighths but these just go in the center to, to hold it together. So if you don't have a one and three eighths, you can choose another one. Okay, I'm gonna grab my tear and tape and I'm gonna cover one of these punched circles with strips of tear and tape. Because as we form our little rosette, we want to make sure that there's a good bit of adhesive holding it together so we can kind of manipulate everything. So I'm going to go ahead and take off these three little pieces, backings off these adhesive strips. Okay. Now, we're going to put this on the inside of my little ring. Okay. Now I'm going to start pressing the top towards the center of the circle. And you want to squeeze it so they have a small circle there. So what I did is I just pushed all the tops of the zigzags into the center. See how that works? Okay, but I want to make sure that that's not going to move. And a great way to do that is to put a little bit of Tombow on the top circle that's going to go on top of that. Okay, so I just had it standing and then I pressed in all of the top edges. And it forms a rosette all by itself. Isn't that cool? And there is my finished rosette. Oop, oop, got to get it in the picture, Barb. There, over there. All right. So let's go ahead and put it on our box. Okay, we have our box this way. We want our stripes going horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my rosette. And I'm just going to adhere it to the top left hand of my box. All right. Now, I have two tails here that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut, not two tails, two strips. And I'm going to cut little tails in them, almost like a little blue ribbon is what I'm making. Now for my sample, I did a little bit of embossing there, white embossing. 
but you can find something that would work just as well on yours or just leave it blank. I'm going to leave mine blank here and um, but you can always stamp or use like a gel pen, pen to write something. All right, we've got just a couple more things to do here. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the back of this. This strip is two inches by, let me check my, I like to give you the right dimensions here. These are, um, let's see, oh, that's not right. I have the wrong page, they're in the wrong, okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> three quarters by two inches. All right, Barb, spit it out. All right, so there, I'm gonna cut a little bit of this one off, just cause I can, and then I'm just gonna slip it right under the rosette. Gonna do the same thing to the next one. A little bit of glue here and right under the rosette. All right, now, I have a little white star, and can anyone guess where I got this star? What set did I get this star from? See if anyone can guess, because I don't didn't have, now I do now, because I borrowed them from a friend, but I didn't have any of the stitched stars and I thought oh my gosh how am I going to make this box without a stitch star so I went through all my sets and I found this star anybody know where I might have found that star oh I'm going to put it straight up and down because that's the way it was on my sample but you can make it however way you want so there you have it isn't that adorable oh I love this and how fast did it take for for us to make that. It is the starfish. You guys are right. It's the starfish from the sand and sea. You guys are too smart for me. Yep. So that's how I made that. So if you have the sand and sea, you also have a star that you can use for your box. Or if you have any of the stitched um, stars, you'll be in great shape. All right, let's go on to number two. Wasn't that so fun? Very, very simple. All right, now, this is cute. All right, our second is our little Uncle Sam box. Okay, I guess I'm going to call it a gift bag. Uncle Sam gift bag. Now, I saw things similar, and I just didn't like the way they looked because they didn't have a hat. They, like, just had the blue brim and then nothing it was just something in the bag and I say something is missing here this needs a little bit of barb to add a little bit of something something okay so this is my version of my uncle sandbox now for me I got a little bag of cookies in here I found these cookies in the bakery section at Weiss and I just put them in a little bag one of the plastic bags you can get from the Stampin' Up! catalog, and then some red ribbon. Isn't that so cute? But this is so fun and quick to make. This, you're gonna love this one too. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna grab my directions. All right. For the bag portion of the box, we're starting with a piece of basic white cardstock for the box. Thank you, Cheryl. I thought that really added something with the, um, the hat. It just didn't look like Uncle Sam. Joe thought it looked like Santa. So I said, I got to do something. This looks like Santa. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and on this, I've already done my scoring, but I will let you know what I did. This is eight by eight. Okay. And I scored on one side at three and five, and then I turned the paper and scored at two and six. That's it. That's it. All right. Oh, thank you, Jean. Yes. Yeah, that, I didn't want him to look like Santa. We don't want people to get confused. So, all right. So I have these four score lines. 
that I have to um, crease with my bone folder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissors. I'm gonna turn it this way. You can see the center portion. This panel is going up and down, not this way, okay? Up and down, and I'm gonna cut in on both of these. I cut kind of on the outside of the score line so that doesn't sh um, show up on the, the panel of the box. And the same thing here. You don't want that bumpy score line. So you always want to cut it to the right of the score line and then you can cut it off when you wedge it. So no one will ever know that it was there. And here you're gonna cut to the left of the score line and then wedge. Okay, all right. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our little bag together. This is so, so simple. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit of the Tombow on that center flap. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the other box. We fold it down and behind the flap lining up the edge of the panel with our fold. Do the same thing on the other side. Behind and fold. All right, well, half of our box is already made. Can you believe it? All right, now, you're gonna open up what's left and we're going to put some Tombow on the insides of these flaps because this is gonna be the front of the box. And when we have this as the front of the box, we want the fold showing, because it looks a little cleaner. And then we just fold it back around. So we have the nice folds here, and then we have the edges on the back. Not that it really, really matters, but that's just the way that makes it look extra nice. All right, well, there's our box. How fast was that? Huh? Record time. Okay, now, for Uncle Sam's face, you're going to have to use your layering circles for this one. Okay, I took the two and seven eighth inch circle and cut petal pink cardstock out of it. Okay, so this is going to be his head. All right, now, before I put it on, I don't know if you can even notice on here, there's a little bit of blush on his cheeks, kind of behind his mustache. And I thought that was such a cute touch, gives him a little more life. So I took the Petal Pink ink and a beautiful blending brush. These are a new addition to the catalog. I'm gonna get a little bit of the ink on my brush and then right where I think his little cheeks are gonna be, I'm gonna rub a little bit of the ink, both sides. Just think about it, ladies. When you get up in the morning, you wanna look alive. We gotta get a little bit of blush on those cheeks. Okay, so that's what I did there, just to give him a little bit of color. He's got a busy weekend. We want him to look really good. Yes, that is one I learned a long time ago. You always want to have the folded edges to the front on your box. So there, let me hold that up a little bit. Can you see his little blushy cheeks? Yep. All right, so let's go ahead. And the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and adhere his head to the box. Now, don't be alarmed. His head is going to hang off the box a little bit. Okay, he doesn't totally fit on the box. So you wanna leave a little bit of space like I did here at the bottom. So he might have, oops, now let me make sure his cheeks are at the same height. Yeah, so he might have a little bit of head sticking off the top and that is okay. I've also thought about maybe making a little bow tie, but I didn't get to that part. 
All right, so I'm just gonna turn this inside um, so I can see the inside and just cut off the top part of his head there. Okay, now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one inch by four inch piece of Pacific Point and that is gonna go right along the top edge of the hat, of the box to be the hat brim. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. And that goes right along the top. There we go. Okay. So far, so good. All right. Next, what I did for the, mu the mustache, I cut out. Let me see. I have, I wrote down all the diameters of these circles. Okay. Let's see. This circle is one and three eighths inch. So I use my one and three eighths inch here. I cut it in half, okay? This side's already curved, so I curved the top one just a little bit, okay? I did that on both pieces, and this is gonna form your cute little mustache. Okay, so you leave the bottom the way it is. And then you bring in, you curve the tops just a little bit. See how that works? And then you're gonna want your two mustache points are gonna come together right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, put a little bit of glue on the back of each of the mustaches. This is a great time to have the glue because you can move those little mustaches around a little bit till you find the place you like them. Okay, there's one, there's two, and see how I have them kind of coming together in the middle there, point to point. Okay, I let them kind of hang up a little bit. That gives it a little more um, dimension. I don't glue the whole thing down. All right, now, now we've got some little things we need to talk about here. Okay, with my quarter inch circle punch, I cut out a couple of eyes. With my half inch circle, I cut a nose. The nose is the petal pink as well. Eyes are black, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and take a dimensional and I'm gonna put that right on the back of the nose. And I'm gonna pop it up right where the two points come together. That's where his nose is gonna be. Okay, so there we go. So far, so good. All right, now let me show you a trick with his eyes. Okay. To give the eyes a little more life, I always use a little gel pen. And it makes them look a little more three-dimensional. So let me show you how I do that. Here is the gel pen I use. It's a white gel, it's called Jelly, okay? And I'm just going to make a little line, a curved line, like it's along the surface of the eye and it just gives the eyes a little more life. Actually looks like the person's al like he's alive, which is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on his face. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the eyes here. And see, you wanna make sure that the, um, little curve you make with your gel pen is facing in the same way because that shows like the light is coming into his face. So you wanna make sure that you have that 
in the same on the same side of the circle see how he looks like he's so much more alive than he was before that really really helps and you can see the um, little bit of blush there so cute all right let's go ahead and finish the hat okay for the hat you're going to need a piece of real red cut at three and a half by two and three quarters again we're going to grab some of these half inch strips of basic white and we're going to go ahead and place those on the hat i know it does it really makes them look alive they look so flat when the eyes are just black I don't remember where I learned that trick. It's been a while. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to place my vertical stripes on my fabulous Uncle Sam hat here. And I just can't imagine an Uncle Sam without this hat, I'll tell you. I didn't wanna go right to the edge. I wanted this to be a little thinner because then it gives the um, illusion of the hat being a little bit rounded. Okay, last of all, we're gonna put the last white stripe right down the middle. Okay, and I'm just gonna go by and just do a little snip snipping. Sometimes my Measuring isn't quite up to snuff. Just gonna cut those off. All right, now we have the hat. Now what I did, I brought in my corner rounder and rounded the top of the hat, but that's really kind of optional. Just gives it a little more character. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it right here and you can decide how tall you want the hat to be. Okay, I'm going to put a piece of the tearing tape along the bottom here to give it some extra good strength there. And then as you bring it up, you're just going to tuck it behind the inside of the box, making sure that it's centered nicely on his head. Okay, I'm gonna, I like a nice tall Uncle Sam hat. How about you guys? All right, there it is. We're almost done, looking good. Last thing we need, of course, is our handle, okay? The handle is cut at 11 inches by three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna just use my fingers and round it a little bit. That makes it easier for it to adhere when it's rounded. I'm gonna grab my tear and tape one more time for his hat. And I'm going to put a little piece of the tear and tape on the top side of the handle. And then I'm going to tuck it right inside on each of the ends. You could also make these with handles on the front and back. I made it kind of Easter basket style. Okay, so, oops, that's not straight. There we go, that's better. So you wanna get it as much as you can in the center there. Gonna take off this little bit of tape. And in the center of the side. And there he is. There is Uncle Sam. Is he not adorable? All right, last finishing touch. I was so thrilled that my friend Mary was able to allow me to borrow some of her stitch stars. And I thought that would be a wonderful accent on the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the larger star and he's gonna go right on the left-hand side, right at the brim of the hat, like that. And I didn't really stamp a message or anything on this one or put a tag. You could definitely do that too. But I just like the way it should, it was this way. Just very clean and simple. All right. Now I'm going to put a dimensional, actually a half a dimensional, on the back of the 
smaller star and that is going to sit a little bit on top of the first. So there you have it. There is Uncle Sam. How's that? Pretty cool. How easy is that, huh? Thank you, Jean. I love these too. I was so excited to show you guys. I was just hoping that we wouldn't lose our streaming. So I asked my husband to please turn off the television because we have YouTube television. So when the television is on, he's actually using some of the bandwidth. So he was kind enough to do that for me. All right, we have one more project. And just getting back to this little basket, there's so many different things you could put in here. Just, just too many to name. And there's cute little 4th of July um, candies that you can get at the store now. So there's all kinds of good stuff. All right, last one. I love this card because I really feel like it's kind of country. I really, really thought it was so cute. And I don't know what, what came over me that get those jars out again, but I certainly glad I did. So, so cute. This is the jar of, <laughs> okay, Renee, socks would look excellent in there. You are correct. I bet I could get red, white, and blue ones too, Renee. Oh, so this is the stamp set I used to make um, this card. Okay, this has been around for a while. It's in the catalog. Um, I love this. It comes with a coordinating punch so you can punch out the cute little jars. Well, I've already done that to make it go a little quicker. So let's take a look how this one um, works. So I took a piece of crumb cake. I like the crumb cake for um, the kind of country look with these cards. So I have crumb cake cut at four and a quarter by 11, and then I scored at five and a half. This one's going to open this way like this, like that. All right. Now, <clears throat> let me show you what I did here. I did a lot of my cutting uh, on my um, stamping already. Okay. I stamped and fussy cut these cute little flowers. And then I have my three jars. This is such a great set. I stamped the jars in black memento and then I use the jar punch to cut them out. I am a big, I'm a huge mason jar person. So this was right down my alley. All right, so let's go ahead and I'll show you a trick I used to make my striped jars. You're gonna love this one. All right, I'm gonna grab some of my blends right here and I'm going to grab some of my post-its. Now these post-its are super sticky and they're stick all over, okay? So they're not just sticky up here, the entire back is sticky and it's super sticky and I think that really helps with the, um, when I'm making my lines on my jar that nothing is gonna bleed through, okay? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm looking for a piece of, Hold on, I want to get a piece of cardstock to put under my pieces here. There we go. Forgot about that. I don't want to get any blends on my surface here. So let's go ahead and make our striped jars first. Okay, let's bring in the card here so you can see how we do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my post-it note and I'm just going to cover leaving out the section that I want to color red, okay? So that bottom part is going to be red. Let's see. I use the dark real red blend, and I'm going to try again because I think that's a little too thick for the bottom. I'm looking at my other one. I think I want to make it a little thinner, okay? So I'm going to put my Post-it note down just like that. Okay, can everybody see what I'm doing here? I have a tendency of going out of the picture today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the bullet point tip of this and just color in 
my jar. And you just come up right to the edge. You don't really push around it, just color right up to the edge. And then you're just gonna take your, and there you have it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do my next one. Probably leave, and remember they don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna start at the top now, coming down this far. And then I'm gonna take my dark real red, color in the top of my jar. Okay, all right, we have one more stripe and these are really super sticky, which is good, but sometimes they're hard to, find, to get up. You have to find an edge that'll come up. All right, so now we have to do the inside stripe. Okay, this is the, probably the trickiest of all, but you can see the color through a little bit of your um, post-it note. So just take a guess. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, then I'm gonna take another post-it note. And I'm gonna come down from there. Then I'm gonna color in this center section. And that's how easy it is to make a striped mason jar. I wish I could paint as well as I can do this because I love to paint um, mason jars, but I really don't do that well. <laughs> So there's one. Okay, we're gonna do the same with the second. All right, and I like to put them like kind of right beside each other. So then we can make sure that they're roughly the same. They don't have to be exact. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in here from the top of my jar right to the edge. And I use the dark real red because it's better. The, the light real red by itself has a bit of an orange tint. So you want to use the dark for that. All right, so there is the top. How easy is that? Okay, now bottom. About the same. Doesn't have to be exactly the same. There's our top and bottom, and then we're going to finish off with our middle and just kind of guess where you want it to be. I'm gonna go there and come down from here. Fill it in. Pretty simple. I find this easier than trying to use a ruler because I don't know. Straight lines are not my strength, so this is the, the best way for me. <laughs> You're more patriotic. Are you going to stand up and sing God Bless America by the end, Jean? <laughs> so there they are. Is that not the most ador adorable little mason jars you've ever seen? They're up there. They're in my top five for sure. I wish I could paint like that. That would be awesome. All right. How about our blue one? I found that the light, misty moonlight was the best. The dark was just so dark that you really couldn't even see any of the details on the jar. So that was why I went with the light, misty moonlight. I'm gonna use the brush tip because I've got a lot of area to cover here. And you guys don't wanna watch me color. That is not exciting at all. All right, coming around the bottom. Just love this color. And I, I chose it for the same reason um, over the 
Knight of Navy because the Knight of Navy was so dark. I just didn't want to go there. So there we go. All right. There is our blue. Our blue mason jar. Now, here is the little silver star. Anyone have ideas where I got that one? You guys are so good at that. Where did I get... <laughs> Where did I get that silver star? Anybody know? Where is that from? Hmm. Can anybody think? Did anyone think of this? Home together. Remember this from Christmas? Do you guys still have this one? These little houses. And it has that little star in the middle. So I ran the house through using the silver metallic paper and voila, I got a cute little star. So that's where I got that. So check your stash, ladies. You probably have everything you need to make these. Okay, now let's go ahead and Little Tombow on the back of my star, and he's gonna go right in the center of my jar. So we are getting close to being done here. Let's go ahead and let's line up our jars along the bottom of our card. Okay, now I put all the jars on using dimensionals, of course. And I started with the jar in the center because I think that helped me with my spacing the best. Okay, so I eyeballed it and I'm going with there. That's not too bad. That's kind of close to the middle. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take my other two. And I kind of centered them in the space that was left there, trying to keep them all the same height. One more, the blue. Whoops, get the backing off that. That backing doesn't wanna come off. All right, let's try this one here, okay. All right. There we go. We got our jars on our card. At first I thought I would put flowers in each one, but the flowers are just too large and weren't going to work. So that's why I kind of went with just one with the flowers and one with the bow. And we called it a day. All right. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of coloring here. I like to keep it easy. I use the Dark Daffodil Delight on all these cute little sunflowers. This is one of my favorite sets. I love the different flowers in this jar set. Just so pretty. It's something that you can use for all different seasons and occasions. It's just really a great one to have in your stash. All right, let's go ahead and color these. So I'm just doing all dark. Daffodil Delight, I couldn't think of that name. I had a moment there. All right, all the way around. And then I'll just show you a little trick I do to give the leaves a little more something something. Okay, one more here. I left this small little flower down here just white. All right, last few. Daffodil Delight petals, we're getting there. All right, there we go. All colored in. All right, now, I like to take the Mango Melody Dark and color 
in towards the center of the flower and out toward the ends of the petals. And it gives it a little bit of an orange cast around the parts of the flower towards the center. And not only does that give it a little bit of a different color, but I think it looks a little bit like it's shaded as well. And then it gives it a little more dimension. So I've, I've always loved this Mango Melody color. So this is giving me just another couple of reasons to like it and use it. But yeah, I really like using that. So let me hold that up for you so you can see that. See how the orange gives it a little more dimension there. Okay. All right. Now, last thing we're going to do here, we have a couple of crumb cake centers to color in here. I'm coloring with, this is the dark crumb cake. We used to grow um, sunflowers at when I was a kid against the house and they would grow so huge. And I was like, once they fall came around that we got to eat all those seeds, that was fun. All right, so last but not least, we have our old olive for the leaves. And you know, there aren't really a lot of leaves on here. So um, most of them are just drawn and are really too kind of too skinny to color. These here work, but the other ones over here are much harder to color. Like that one there, I didn't even attempt to color it because it's so thin. Just put a little bit of dot of color there. All right, so there you have it. There are my flowers. Let's bring in our card. Okay, dimensionals again. on the back and that is going to sit so nicely on the top of my blue jar just like that so cute all right and i cut a little linen thread bow and that's going to go on my center jar i'm going to use my dimensionals for that Not my dimensionals. How about my glue dots? You know that what I meant. All right, let's see. Where is my little pokey tool? I had it, but it's missing. Oh, we'll just have to use the scissors. All right, so I'm gonna grab my, and that's gonna go right on my center jar. Okay, then, I needed a sentiment, okay? I don't have any 4th of July sentiments, so I kind of looked through my stash and I found this one from the Sunflower set. You guys remember this one, Let's Celebrate You? Of course you remember that one, okay? Well, I don't need the word you. I just want, if you look here, I just have the words, let's celebrate, okay? So let me show you another trick. I'm sure you've seen this one before. This is another post-it note trick. How to run get my Misty Moonlight ink. Okay, I'm going to grab a post-it note. Come on, these are the ones that are almost sticky all the way to the end. And I'm just gonna use it here to cover the U. Okay, so what I have here is let's celebrate. I'm gonna take my ink, I'm gonna dab it onto my stamp. And don't forget to do this, because I've done that. You want to tear away your post-it note before you stamp. I'm going to bring in my little banner and I'm going to stamp. And there you have it. Let's celebrate. So that's an easy way 
to be able to use a lot of the sentiments you already have in different ways. By removing some of the parts of the sentiments, you can make a brand new card. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut my little tail here. And now, this is the last step of my card. I'm going to grab some dimensionals and put this sentiment in the top right-hand corner. And the card is ready. I thought this would be a super cute card to give to my cousin Judy for inviting us to the picnic. I thought, I think she'd love that. Okay? So that is my third project. I hope you guys enjoyed those. I really, really enjoyed doing them for you. Now remember that you can get this PDF on my blog. My blog is the Wexford Stamper blogspot.com if you go to that um that if you go to that address you will see the this will be up on my blog by the end of the evening and you'll be able to find the um all the directions this this video tutorial and there will be a link that you can download this um pdf Okay, and before I go, I just want to remind you that I do have um, kits put together if you are interested in buying a kit. Okay, this is what the kits look like. They're, they're all three um, projects are in here, and this costs $20 or it is free with a $30 order. All right, so let me know. You can message me here or you can email me, whatever is easiest. And let me know if you'd like a kit. All right, I'm going to get started on those tomorrow. I already have some orders for them. If you're going to place an order, please use my hostess code here, 2V3JCKNY. That would be wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for joining me this evening. I hope you enjoy them. Have a wonderful and safe 4th of July, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.